So we're looking at complementary trigonometric relationships. Uh, now we're going to jump straight to GeoGebra and take a look at how this looks. So when dealing with the unit circle, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, the coordinates of this dot are cos of the angle sine of the angle. And it doesn't matter what that angle is, that is always true. Uh, cos because uh, it's this adjacent side here and sine because it's this opposite side here. Now let's look at the complementary angle of 22. Now the complementary is 90 degrees minus whatever that angle is. Here we have the complementary relationship. So we have cos 22 degrees and cos 68. Now that angle is special because it's 90 minus 22. And I've created this in such a way uh, that that will always be true. So cos 38 and cos 52, they are complementary angles. Now, when we do that, let's just make this angle a bit smaller so we can really get a sense of this. This length here is the y coordinate, it's sine 26. Now, over here, this length is identical, right? Because this angle here is equal to this angle here. These two triangles are congruent, so that length is equal to that length. So that means that this length here, which represents the x coordinate of this dot, cos 64, is equal to this length here, which is this bit here. So in other words, cos 64 is equal to sine 26. And similarly, this length here, which represents cos 26, is equal to the um, this line here, which is the y coordinate of this dot, which is sine 64. So now to generalize this, what I'm saying is that if this angle here is theta and this angle here is theta, uh, then um, this angle here, let's draw a nice big one here, is um, pi minus theta, sorry, pi on two minus theta. Pi on two, 90 degrees, minus theta, because that's there. Now, uh, the coordinates of this dot can be described in two ways. We can say that the coordinates of this dot are cos pi on 2 minus theta, sine pi on 2 minus theta. But we could also say that the coordinates of that dot are equal to, we can sh move this y coordinate over here, so we can say that the coordinates of the dot could also be sine theta, cos theta where theta is the angle between uh, the y-axis and this point here. Now, the upshot of this is really straightforward. We get this complementary relationship. So sine pi on 2 minus theta is equal to cos theta. And cos pi on 2 minus theta is equal to sine theta. We don't need to worry about these little a's and b's here. Hopefully you can appreciate that this occurs in all four quadrants. So here we have the angle theta, in this case cos 26, and here we have a larger angle, uh, cos 90 degrees plus 26, which is 116 degrees. Now in this case, uh, we still get this nice line here that's equal to this line here. Uh, we also get this line here, which is equal to this line here. Now the only difference is that uh, this negative here, right? Because we're in the um, second quadrant, so x coordinates are going to be negative. So we have this relationship. So this was our first quadrant relationship. Now, if I move over here, we get our second quadrant relationship here, where we can say that um, cos theta sine theta here, where theta is uh, this angle here. Now, this angle all the way around here is uh, pi on 2 plus theta. And that means that uh, that's going to be equal to negative cos pi on 2 plus theta sine pi on 2 plus theta. But we can simplify both of those in the same way that we simplified it here to just be negative sine theta cos theta because the cos theta is uh, this, uh, sorry, this length here, and so that cos theta represents that length there, and the negative sine theta represents that length there. That leads us to our second quadrant relationships of sine pi on two plus theta being equal to cos theta, and cos pi on two plus theta being equal to 
negative sine theta. Now, of course, there are third quadrant and fourth quadrant relationships as well. Q3, they're both going to be negative. Uh, but in Q4 here, sine 3 pi and 2 plus theta, that represents the y coordinate. Uh, and the y coordinate is going to be negative in Q4. And cos 3 pi and 2 plus theta, that represents the x coordinate. And the x coordinate is going to be uh, positive. Now, what can we do with this? Questions that look a little bit like this. So if we know that the value of sine theta is 0 0.4 and the value of cos alpha is 0 0.8, we can find the value of sine pi and 2 minus alpha because we know that sine pi on 2 minus alpha is equal to cos uh, alpha. And we know that cos alpha is 0 0.8. Uh, now, this one here, cos pi on 2 plus theta. Uh, now, we know that cos pi on 2 plus theta is going to be equal to sine theta. But you might just want to draw yourself a little circle here and say, right, what am I doing? Cos pi on 2 plus theta, I'm doing this angle here, uh, which is the same as this angle here. Now, I'm trying to find cos. I'm trying to find the x-coordinate. And the x-coordinate is going to be negative. So that must be negative. So negative, and of course, we already know that because we've got it, we've got it sitting here. Um, now, cos pi and 2 plus theta equals negative sine theta. Uh, sine theta equals 0 0.4, so negative 0 0.4 is negative 0 0.4. That's complementary trig relationships.